Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is King Koda and welcome to 10 very important tips that you should follow for your Genshin Impact account. Let's get right into it. Number one is a tip I have after helping a couple friends of mine with their account recently. They had just started the game and they were not leveling up their artifacts. They had a bunch of purple, some blue artifacts, and they were all at plus zero. If you don't know and you just started the game, yes, you do want to kind of wait until you're at least AR40 to 45 to begin farming artifacts but for the beginning game leveling up a couple purple artifacts and even a couple blue artifacts can help you out massively sometimes you, you have to level up what you got especially the feather as this is the highest base attack that you can get on a character aside from your weapon and leveling up your character and so if you can level up an artifact, which has no restriction on how high you can get it at the beginning of the game, to its, its max potential, whether that be 8, 12, uh, 16, uh, getting it as high as you can get it will get you the most damage possible. And same for the flower, if you don't know the base on a flower is always HP. So even if it doesn't have the best substats, Leveling up a flower early game will always grant you uh, more survivability. These two are ones that I recommend that you just, you gotta level them up even if they aren't good early game. And you'll get back about 80% of that XP whenever you do get an upgraded artifact that you can then just throw your crappy artifact into. Going for ideal artifacts is end game. Remember, don't worry about it so early on. I'd even say if you have an attack percent sands on your main DPS, go ahead and level that one up too even if it doesn't have good subs. And for tip number two, I'm gonna, again, stick with the artifacts because I feel like this is one part of the game that a lot of people struggle with, and that is to go for the stats over the set bonus. You can see here I have a two-piece mill lift, two-piece gladiators on my Zhongli. It's not the worst, but it's definitely not the best. What you want is a four-piece mill lift. However, I could not get those artifacts in the stats that I needed. Uh, these couple gladiator pieces are not all that bad. Well, that one's actually kind of bad. But this one is really good and really hard to find a replacement for with that 20% crit damage, 6% crit rate, 16% energy recharge. This artifact is beautiful, so it's really hard to find a replacement. So instead of going for, you know, the set bonus of the Tenacity of Millilith and missing out on a lot of crit rolls and a lot of really good stats, I just go with what I got in order to get me pretty good percentages. Now, 39%, this actually can be boosted whenever I have them with my Rosaria, so I don't really care about that too much, but 212% damage is incredible. If I want to, I can swap around his weapon and get a much more generous ratio of 61 to 152. That is really hard to argue against whenever it comes to getting a simple bonus from the four set piece. Now yes, you do want the set piece bonuses, especially end game, but then, but again, that's just end game focus. For tip number three, we're gonna stay right here on the character screen, but instead we're gonna look at my buddy Bennett. There are some characters in this game, Bennett is the most egregious uh, one to show off, that when you get constellations on them, it doesn't necessarily make them better. For those of you that don't know, Bennett's C6 makes it to where uh, sword, claymore, pull arm wielding characters inside your Fantastic Voyage, your ultimate's radius, gain 15% pyro damage bonus, and their weapons are infused with pyro. This is useless for 90% of team comps in the game. The only ones that this is helpful for is characters like Diluc or Hu Tao, who infuse their weapon with pyro and they like to be infused with pyro but if you were to use him with somebody like eula you would completely ruin eula if you had a c6 bennett and you use them on the same team because eula's main form of damage is physical damage the white numbers that appear on the screen when you hit somebody she doesn't want to do the red pyro numbers it'll drastically reduce her damage i can actually show you that in an example so eula without bennett does about 6 to 7k on Thread is Fine. With Bennett, about 3k. My damage was cut in half, and mind you, when I'm standing in the Bennett buff, 
My attack has actually increased to almost 4,000 with Bennett. However, it's just not worth that attack buff of a full thousand points damage. It's not worth it because my Bennett is C6. Please, if you are just starting the game or you're one away from getting a C6 Bennett, just no. The next tip I have for you in Genshin Impact is to make sure that you are constantly gathering supplies. Uh, supplies of all nature, make sure that you are always gathering, don't just run past them. Something I still do and I'm always running out. One of the big things to always know is that as of Genshin Impact 1.5, uh, they added the Serenity Teapot. With the Serenity Teapot, you whack on a tree and you will get wood. If you're like me and you want to customize that tree, that wood is something that you will always be in dire need of. Same thing as how I'm always in dire need of different mining supplies that you can get by going around the world and gathering those. Plenty of days I do not go around and gather these and I always wish I would have because these mining supplies can not only be used to create weapons for you, but they are also used in order to create furniture for your Sorry, teapot and experience for your weapons. The more weapons you level up, as the more characters you get that need new weapons, and the new interesting weapons you get in the game demand. Why is that? No, oh, oh, whatever. Uh, the the more and more XP you need. I almost have enough XP to ninety another weapon, but not quite. And so I'm hoping I don't like whatever Kakomi's weapon does. Uh, or get lucky and get a new weapon that I won to 90. Um, but yeah, make, make sure you're always gathering. Make sure you're gathering all the supplies you can. Even once you 100% the map, these things reset. You're going to want the flowers and stuff in order to level up the characters. You're going to want the, the rocks to build weapons and upgrade those. You're going to want the food ingredients to create new food dishes. Uh, in order to power up your characters even further while you are playing. In the same vein as making sure you're always gathering up supplies, I highly recommend that you just plan out what you're doing in your week. Uh, if you don't know, the domains in Kinshin Impact will reset uh, every day to a different rotation of what is within them. You can see today is Saturday, so we have the uh, dandelion chains as well as the arrow strides uh, these are used to upgrade your weapons they're not always available so knowing exactly what day they're available and what day I want to go and farm those for specific weapons to level those up is important for instance if I wanted to level up my last staff of Homa to 90 I would need a bunch of these so I, I may go and farm that just so I can have that last weapon leveled up the artifact domains are always the same, so those are good to farm on days that you aren't farming something else. Uh, like I said, that they're an in-game pursuit, not a current game pursuit. The talent books are on a rotation, and now with Inazuma, there are more talents that you have to plan about going and getting, as well as more weapon materials that you have to plan and go and get. I believe these were used for the Mist Splitter, and the uh, the tree branches, I believe, were used for the Engulfing Lightning that just came out, so you have to plan out your week, because you don't have all of the resin in the world to be able to go and do that. Speaking of resin, a highly thing I recommend to newer players, if you are still a beginner, is that if you're pre-AR20, your daily resin should be going towards XP books and Mora. Ideally more the XP books than the Mora, because you don't get as many of these as you do get Mora, you will accumulate a lot more Mora throughout just regular playtime than you do XP books. And as you get more and more characters, you're going to want to level them up and it gets expensive at the higher levels. For instance, your average character's level 90 will take you over 400 of the purple tier books. Now you can supplement that with the lesser tier books, but it takes a lot. Now the ascension cost is not too bad. Uh, even the level 90 ascension is only 120,000 uh, Mora. But then you look at the talents. 
And if I wanted to level up, let's say, just my E abilities talent, which is just from 5 to 6, 6 is a pretty good ending point for most. It's 37,000 Mora for just this one talent level, not to mention the other four that came before it. Uh, it starts off pretty expensive. You can see my uh, basic attack is only level 2, and it's still 17,000 Mora. And then if you ever decide that you want to crown a character, that is 700,000 Mora to get them at the highest peak tier they can possibly be, which is worth it for a lot of characters. So farming early game in your early ARs from 1 to 20, as soon as you're able to go and do ley lines, go and do them, will help set you up to have enough for in the future, especially if you're free to play. Speaking of which, if you are free to play, don't, don't wish on every banner. The people that wish on every banner are the people that put money into this game. If you go and look at any free to play, they'll usually skip a couple banners because you have to. You will not get enough Primo Gems. Yes, Mohoyo is being a little bit more lenient with the Primo Gem giving as of late. You get, you get, you know, 60 Primo Gems a day by going and doing this. You, of course, get your 60 Primo Gems a day by doing your daily missions, which all mine are all the way down in Inazuma. Uh, which, yes, that's 120 Primos that you can get during an event. That's still not enough for a wish. If you save up, you know, you, you skip a couple banners. Ryan Shogun, she looks great. Maybe you want to go for her right now. But then the next banner, Kokomi, not all that interested. Skip her. Toma, maybe, is the next one. And you're like, oh, I like Toma. Go in on him. Just skip at least a banner, and you'll have enough primos that you'll be able to go a little bit further than if you are not. This is especially true if you are free to play, and it's somewhat of a recommendation even if you're not. Don't wish on every banner unless you are making YouTube guides on characters and you, you need the characters. My next tip for you guys is to master iframes in Genshin Impact. This is something that will be more difficult for some of you than others, but saves you out on a lot of needing to be healed, a lot of uh, damage to your shields, if you have shields and you're wanting them to last longer. The more you master iframes, the better it will be for you. There are several different ways you can do iframes. One of them is to sprint right at the last second before you get hit, as you saw. Another one is to pop your ultimate right as you're about to be hit. This will cost you into the animation and stop any damage that you are currently taking while it's casting. Now, I, I'm gonna have to slow it down so you can see that because that does last longer than her animation. Some animations like Zhongli's uh, Meteorite, uh, those are very long lasting animations. Another way you can dodge is by swapping characters right whenever you're about to be hit. This will give you a slight bit of a buffer in between the character swap. I'm gonna try and time this out. So I will admit, the swap characters to dodge is a very difficult one to pull off, and it's not as reliable as just simply sprinting or popping your ultimate. Those are the two main ways that you can do it. You can get a couple of iframes by swapping a character. So if you're if you're close to dying, just give it a shot, I guess. <laughs> uh, another thing I gotta recommend is to feel free to use food. Yes, I, this means the the regular healing foods that you cook to keep your characters topped up but it also means the special attack boosting and defense boosting and elemental damage boosting uh foods that you you can craft throughout the game feel free to use those uh i personally stockpiled over 100 versions of the delicious adeptus te te temptation and the delicious jade parcels i stockpiled over 100 of these and there has never been a point in the game where I've been like, well, now I have to use these. I've always just used these just because I want to kill something faster. And that's fine. Just do that. There's nothing in this game that is so overtly difficult that you can't just use food to, like, help you farm things. A lot of people like to stockpile this and be like, well, maybe there'll be an event coming out that I'll have to eat this food in order to be able to clear that event. That has not happened. I don't see that happening. They have to cater to the players that 
aren't able to play at a higher tier also, so I don't see that being a possibility. Instead, pop your shield boost, pop your food boost, and then go and do your weekly boss. You'll kill it faster, and you'll do bigger numbers and have a lot more fun that way. So feel free to go ahead and use these. And with filling free, I want to make my last tip. Just feel free to take time to enjoy the world that you're in. Explore this world. Don't just skip through all the dialogue as you're like rushing to get to the next boss fight or something. It's, it's not that kind of game. There's no competitive aspect to this. It's a beautiful open world with some amazing story and well-designed characters that you miss out on just skipping through the story. Uh, the number of people that I tell, this Gunyun Stone Forest, this set of islands down here, this was made by Zhang Li attacking another god and sealing him away. And they're like, well, why wasn't that explained to me? It is! Don't skip the cutscenes, especially not the special cutscenes that you get the unlock quests and the the dates don't don't skip through these those are well crafted for you to be able to really understand the characters in the game Eula I'm talking also go back to being I I doesn't talk so that's all I gotta say is make sure you're taking the time to enjoy the game hopefully my tips have helped you to be able to do that more if you did enjoy, please feel free to leave a like and tell me about it down in the comment section down below. Also, I'm getting very close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. I believe I'll be hitting that very soon, and uh, as soon as I hit the 1,000 subscribers, I will plan a giveaway. There'll be a video that I'll put up, and that'll have the details for the giveaway and how you can enter. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace. Hey guys, King Coda here. I hope you found those beginner tips useful, and if you did, please do leave a like and comment and all that. It really helps me out. Uh, on the screen right now, you should see a couple videos, one that is from my channel and one that YouTube just randomly recommended for you. So go ahead and click on one of those, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.